Good morning, everybody. Here we are, another wonderful blessing that God's given us to be in His Word and, and to get our wheels turned and get our day started off right with the best thing, and that is His Word. This morning, I want to look at a passage over in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, and in verse 11. Uh, this verse uh, seems to come up quite often, um, and, the, and the Bible says, For I know the thoughts, New King James, so a lot of them say plans, for I know the plans that I have towards you or think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Many times I see this verse, people posting you know, on social media and whatnot, uh, t-shirts and, and whatnot. Uh, but what does this verse mean? Um, apparently, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, it looks as if this verse is being used as if I, God, has some type of special plans for my life. As if God has got, has like singled me out for some great mission or some special purpose um, in life. But is that what the verse is saying? You know, everything we need to come to the Bible, we need to keep things within its context. Now, God does have plans for, for each and every one of us. But, it, but is it plans as if I'm some special piece to God's great plan? Um, I wouldn't go that far. What is, going, what is happening here in Jeremiah chapter 29 is, is um, we back up in verse 1, or verse 10, sorry. It says, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you. There in verse 11. So specifically what this is talking about is um, God's talking to Jeremiah, of course. They're going to go off into Babylonian captivity, and they did for 70 years. And he said, hey, I'm going to bring you back. Because God's ultimate plan of bringing Jesus had not taken place yet. So they had to come back from Babylonian captivity and reestablish things um, in the land, build a temple, so on and so forth. So what Jeremiah is saying here, or what God is telling Jeremiah, said, hey, you're gonna, you're, the people's going to go into captivity for 70 years in Babylon, but they're going to come back. That's my plan. You see, that's the plan that God is talking about, and the plan to continue things until Jesus would come. Now, does God have plans for mankind? Yes, he does. And it is much better plan than prosperity. And that is what was going to happen when they come back to Jerusalem after the 70 years of captivity. They, life was going to resume. They were going to be prosperous and so on and so forth. But that's not necessarily the plans that God has for you and I. If it was, what would be the point for Jesus to coming? Now, God does have a plan for us. And he has a desire for us. And I believe his desire and his plan is, is one and the same. Paul wrote Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and in verse 4, he says that God desires all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Friends, I believe that's the plan. It's the same plan for you. It's the same plan for me. It's the same plan for the guy across the street. It's the same plan for the lady at the checkout. At the red, It's the same identical plan is God wants each and every one of us to be saved. But we have to come to understand the truth of how that's going to take place. Now, you and I are very special to God. We're created in the image of God. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. James talks about uh, when he's talking about the tongue. He says, with it we curse man, we bless God and curse man who are made in the, in or in the similitude of God. So we are very special to God. We're so special to God that he said his only begotten son when Paul wrote to the Romans in Romans the fifth chapter. And that when we were yet without strength, what did he do? Set forth his son. When we couldn't do anything for ourselves, when we needed to be reconciled to God, we couldn't do that. God's plan was for us to be reconciled, to be saved, to be justified, to be forgiven. And that was only possible through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. So his plan is not one of, of you and I being in some big part of his plan or his scheme. All of that's been done. All that's been fulfilled. And even with the apostles, he said, y'all the same. 
Mm-hmm. One's not more important than it. Not, it looked, even in the apostles, there was not special plans for each one of them. They all had the same plan. Let's take the gospel into all the world. You see, it's the same plan that God has. And that is for each and every one of us to be saved. And that in and of itself should be sufficient. That should make us feel special. That should make us feel loved. I recall when the 70 had come back in Luke's account, the 70 had come back and had told the Lord, oh, the demons, you know, are, they, they obey our word. And Jesus said, you know what? Don't rejoice at this, but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. That's what matters, not some big special plan. You've got some big plan for me, some big position for me and, and whatnot, and they're going to be prosperous. All that's, all that's just a bunch of nonsense. None of that matters. What matters is our name is written in the book of life. That's the great plan for God or from God for you and I. And that's possible by Jesus Christ when we obey the gospel. When we believe in him, we have faith in him, we confess him, we repent of our sins, and we are crucified or we are baptized with him so that those sins can be cut away, Colossians 2, 11, 12, and 13. That's God's plan. And my friend, it's the same plan for you and it's the same plan for me. And what a special plan that is that God has for us. God wants us to be saved. He's got a plan to make that happen. And so how about you? Will you be a part of God's plan? Will you feel God's desire and obey him? Submit to him? Be crucified with Christ in the waters of baptism? That's his plan. I also recall another passage where the Bible says that the Pharisees had rejected the will of God, not being baptized with the baptism of John. That's part of God's plan. It was then, and it is now. But hey, there's your dose of God's word today. God has a plan, and it's a plan for you and I to be saved and be written in the book of life. Hey, hope you all have a great day. Lord willing, tomorrow we'll get back and we'll get us another dose of God's word. We'll see you then.